Hi, this is Angie Woolsey with another edition of The Amazing Art Show. Today we have got a fabulous project we are going to be working on and I'm going to go over very quickly a few of the supplies that you're going to be needing for today's project. You are going to need some thick cardboard and you can get this anywhere. It could be an old box or whatever. We're going to need some large sheets of all kinds of colors of construction paper and you're going to need a very thick kind of piece of board. Once again, you could use kind of something from a box, maybe some cardboard, or this is a mat board, which we've also used in a couple other lessons before. So those are the things that you're going to need. We'll also need some oil pastels, glue, scissors, pencils, those types of things. So if you're ready, I'm ready, and we're going to be getting started today. All right, our inspiration for our project today came from this book, is I Am a Sea Turtle, and the illustrator is Todd Uren and he has some fabulous um, illustrations in here and that's what kind of got me thinking about sea turtles and a project kind of like that. Plus, I was looking on the internet and we have, I, I ran across this thing that was really neat by a turtle named Koopa and Koopa is an artist. Oh yes, now you may think that turtles cannot be artists but I beg to differ because I've seen some of his work and it was Fabulous. So we are doing our project today in Koopa's honor because I'm so thrilled about his artistic ability. And so we are going to be starting on our picture today and we're going to be making a sea turtle. Now the first thing that I want to point out to you is there are land turtles and there are sea turtles. Sea turtles have those long flippers that help them swim in the water. Not good for walking on land but definitely good for swimming. And then you have land turtles, which live on land, breathe air all the time. They don't get down in the water and spend hours and hours down in the water like sea turtles. An interesting fact that I wanted to share with you guys today, and I actually have a very special guest that is going to help demonstrate this point to you guys, is we have with us today, Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy is a Russian turtle, and she is behaving herself so well at the moment. But I wanted to talk to you about the differences between land turtles and sea turtles. Sea turtles have these long flippers. Unlike Miss Piggy here that has these legs and these little toenails that help her to be able to walk around on the ground very easily, sea turtles have flippers because why do they have flippers? Because they need to swim well. It's not important that they be able to walk on the ground necessarily as well as a land turtle. Now, Miss Piggy also has another ability that sea turtles don't, and that is that she has the ability when she gets scared or she feels threatened, she pulls in her head and she pulls in her little arms and legs, and all that's left is a shell. A sea turtle does not have those capabilities. It can pull in its head and protect its head, but it cannot pull in its flippers, so it better be a super fast swimmer if a predator is after it because it cannot protect its little flippers. So that's why they are such great swimmers. Thank you so much, Miss Piggy, for helping us to point out that. And I'd like to show you an example of what we're kind of going for today. So we are going to be starting on our sea turtle picture. And what I want you to notice is that right here, kind of in the center part of our picture, we're going to have a very, very large sea turtle. We're going to make sure we put those flippers on our sea turtle. Now down here in our foreground area can be super, super busy because that is going to have all the stuff that'll be down on the bottom of the ocean. So lots of coral and seaweed, maybe some netting and stuff from fishermen that might have broke their net starfish, rocks, and different types of things like that, and we'll be discussing on how to do those in a moment. Of course, the upper part of your picture is going to be just the top of the water. We've done some bubbles and things for our sea turtle. So we know all of the different colors in the ocean, and I want you to think about what types of colors are on there. We know from our color wheel that you've got blues and greens and purples, which are our cool colors, and we've got reds and oranges and yellows, which are our warm colors. And so you want to think about what types of colors would you see in the ocean. So I'm going to kind of start covering my board here and I want to just think about those types of things. Now I want you not to get so stuck in the box of only using blues and greens and purples. I want you to use a couple splashes of some other colors as well. But I want you to just kind of have that in the back of your head. Now when you start to cover your board, there's an easy way to cover your board and there's a difficult way to cover your board you want to do it the easy way. So, what I would suggest is we want it to have lots of different shapes and a certain type of movement to your picture. So, we don't want to just put this on here with these nice straight lines. 
How many times have you seen a straight line in the ocean? Not very often because it's currently, you know, it's always moving and it's got the currents. And so we want to see wavy type of lines. So what I'm going to start out doing is I'm going to just cut my paper and I'm going to do just some kind of a wavy type of line. And I'm just going to cut that off first. And I want to save my scraps because I'm going to be using those later. And so I know that I'm going to be putting this blue down here towards the bottom. We also want to make sure when you're starting to get this on there, make sure that you get all the way to the edge. And if you can't get it to the edge, if like some part of it's showing, just drop it down a little bit. It's okay if it hangs off a little bit. That would be better than having the white show. And then I'm just going to start pulling some other colors as well. So I'm going to pull this aqua blue next. Now, it would be very hard for me to cut this exact same pattern again unless I kind of had something to go by. So you can actually use this piece as a pattern. So what I would do is then kind of lay this down on here and get it lined up. And if I was okay with that, I could just glue this down like that. And I actually think that that is what I will do for today's lesson. So I didn't cut anything off of this aqua one. I'm just going to glue it down as is. But I don't want this straight line up here, and we want this area covered. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in here, and I think I will use maybe some orange. And I'm just going to kind of lay it on there because, once again, I don't want that straight edge to show. And I kind of want to just look at it and see how I want to do this. And then I'm going to cut some kind of a curved line. And don't make them all the same. So maybe some of them are more of a jagged kind of wavy line, or maybe some of them are the longer, more smooth types of lines. And so now this can go here. And notice that I'm using lots and lots of layers of paper. This is always a good idea to really layer your paper. It adds lots of interest and variety to your artwork. I'm getting rid of all these um, straight lines because I don't want those to show. Now I've still got a little bit of white showing over here so I think I really like there's a purple piece down here I'm trying to get to. Alright now my purple piece is going to be really important because I know once I kind of get things laid on here that I need to cover a pretty good amount of paper up here and it's kind of in a weird shape. So I'm going to kind of lay my paper the way I want it. If I want to, I could even kind of sketch out where I need it to kind of come to. So I'm going to just kind of draw my line down this way. And then I know for a fact that I will get it right. And remember, as you're doing this, take your time, mess up, go back, it's no big deal. You could also, another thing that you could do, and I didn't bring any with me today, but you could also use some of those pattern scissors that have the, the wavy lines or the zigzags. Anything like that would be really, really interesting and fun to use. All right, so I have just about gotten everything covered. So my next thing is, is that I'm just going to lift everything up and I'm going to start gluing everything. And one thing that I will say is that you want to make sure that you get lots of glue down on these things because they tend to come up off these boards pretty easily. All right, so while I'm going to be getting all this glued together so that we have our palette and we're ready to get going, I'm going to let you guys check out some interesting turtle facts. A sea turtle is a reptile. Sea turtles have existed for 180 million years. Sea turtles can weigh between 200 and 300 pounds. Okay, so I am getting my last piece kind of glued on here. And once you get your last piece on there, if you'll kind of take a second to kind of rub everything down, get any little air bubbles out, kind of make sure that you have everything where you want it because that's your last chance to move anything if it's not where you want it. All right, now, very quickly, I'm going to show you something. I've got pieces here that are hanging off the edge and these hanging off the edge here. If this really bothers you, you can cut them off with your scissors or maybe get mom and dad to help you and you can use an X-Acto knife to get that really nice and clean. I'm just going to flip mine over and I'm okay with those pieces right on the edge, but I am going to trim this little piece off there. 
Once I've done that, we have got our palette ready and we are ready to get started working on our sea turtle. One thing that I would really suggest is if go on the internet, pull up things that you can, you can see what the image looks like or if you've got books or anything like that, or if you've already got some books at home and maybe they aren't a sea turtle, maybe it's about a donkey. You could do your project about a donkey, but you wanna have something there to kinda look at because it's kinda hard to go just from your head and remember what things look like and really get those good details that we're looking for. Um, also, I want you to remember we are working really big today, all right? So think big and work big. So I'm going to start with my drawing of my sea turtle. And one thing that I wanted to point out to you guys is that a sea turtle, his shell is very kind of more slender and more kind of aerodynamic because it's good for swimming through the water. Not like a land turtle that's got this big hump in it. So when you're starting to work on your turtle shell, you want more of a flat kind of shell. So kind of think about that. And that's usually where I start is kind of the shell area. Some people start on the head, some people start in different places. For some reason for me, the shell seems like a good place to start. So I'm just going to very carefully sketch this out. And remember that you are going to be going over different layers of paper and so sometimes your pencil may kind of bump around a little bit and that is okay, it's no big deal. And so I'm just looking at kind of the picture here. I'm looking at what kind of shapes that I see. I see that a lot of people, especially my kids at school, I see that when they draw a shell turtle, it's like this one little shape. And when I'm looking here, I can see this has different cuts out, has little places that are cut out in it that you, you wouldn't know unless you'd really taken a good hard look at this, this picture. So I'm going to come in. It's got a little cut out kind of where the head goes to help protect the head. And then another little area kind of where the, the fin will be. So I'm going to make sure while I'm doing the head that most of your sea turtles, the top part of the lip, I guess you would call it, of your turtle, is kind of got a sharp little point on it and that's because it's very sharp and it helps them to tear off seaweed and tear little things that they're going to be eating apart. And something else that was very funny when I was starting this project is one of my favorite movies is Finding Nemo and when we started this project I started thinking about the sea turtle that was in Finding Nemo and he's always you know, they were riding the, the current and the wave and it just kind of got me thinking because I was like one of my favorite characters from that. So I am adding my, um, my fins here. You wouldn't really see this other fin back here except maybe just a little bit back there in the background. So I'll add that one there. And um, the one up here in the front kind of, I'll just tuck it up in here somewhere. And I've got this eye on the side here. You wouldn't be able to see, but I will be drawing this eye here and I always, eyes are one of my favorite things to do and so I really like to emphasize the eyes and make those really big. So I'm going to add my eye in there and once I get that done, the last thing that I want to go back in and do is go in and add that different kind of patterning that you see on their shells and this is where you can get really creative. If you want your turtle to be a little more realistic, you might really look at those shapes that you see on your picture of your turtle and then try to you know emulate those shapes that you see on there or you may want to make your turtle a little more abstract and come up with some different types of shapes that you would like to add to your turtle. So I'm going to first start working on this patterning that I see down here along the edge and I'm going to be working very quickly. You guys take your time because you are not on a time schedule. I want mine to be pretty realistic, so I'm going to come in with these big, kind of, um, almost geometric looking type shapes and just kind of start filling in. It's kind of like a puzzle. You don't want them all to look the same because if you'll look on your turtle, all of those shapes that are on there are different. Similar in shape and size, but different. And then when I get done with that, we are going to be ready to start adding color. Now when we start adding color today, we are going to be using oil pastels, which we have used in projects before. And we want to add lots of colors to these. Now as far as colors go on your turtle, 
you can make these as colorful as you want or you can try to keep it more realistic. In our example today, lots of greens and browns, but I also threw that blue in there just to kind of make it pop a little bit, catch your eye. But you can get as creative with your colors as you want to. If you want to keep things more realistic, you're going to go for kind of browns and golds and those types of colors. But one thing that I will say that I really didn't touch on is a lot of times on your turtle, you've got on his face and on his fins, he's got this kind of um, scale-like pattern. And it's not so much like, um, like a snake scales that are all the same color, but it's like actually like little individual shapes, kind of like his shell, but it's on his, the pattern is on his um, fins. So you want to kind of think about that. Think about if that's something that you want to add. On my example, I did some on his head, but I didn't necessarily do the ones that were down on his fins. So think about that. Think about how you want to work on that. All right, so we are ready to start adding color to our pitcher. And as far as color goes, remember, kind of get your plan done as far as do you want to keep it more realistic or do you want to go a little more out there. Um, when you're starting, when you start to color with these, you're going to have to realize that you're going up onto different layers of paper. It's going to be a little tricky and sometimes your um, oil pastels may kind of catch on things, but just you can work through it. It'll be just fine. So I'm going to start with some orange just because that is my new favorite color. And I'm just going to actually start on those places that are in between those different shapes that I added on the shell. And I'm just going to begin coloring inside there. When I get up to my orange paper, which is up here on the top, it's kind of pointless for me to also color that orange. So if you happen to choose one of those colors that is down on your paper, you might not need to color that area as well. So while I'm continuing to color, and you guys can continue to color, I want you to check out some of these interesting reptile sea turtle facts. Sea turtles live 15 to 20 years, and some have even been recorded to live up to 80 years old. Sea turtles' favorite things to eat are jellyfish, seaweed, crabs, shrimp, and snails. All right, boys and girls, so I'm going to kind of stop where I am. I'm not really to a good finishing point, but I want to kind of go over a few things with you really quick. Um, once you've kind of gotten your main color down on there, I want you to think about going in and think about shading and where you could add some darker colors and some more highlights and things to kind of make your turtle have some realistic qualities to it. So if you think about where would those shadows fall and think about a lot of times, especially when those turtles are down there swimming deep down in the ocean, they've got lots of those shadows on there. So any area that would kind of be next to the body would kind of be shadowed. So you might want to think about coming in with a darker color in those areas and kind of adding some shadowing. The underneath part, like kind of by the bottom lip and then down by the, the neck and the, that upper part of the body, but it'll be facing downward, you would also want to come in there and kind of add some shadows down into those places. That fin that's on the other side of your turtle definitely would be darker because it's going to be more in the background, so you want to kind of think about that. And then I want you to think about on your shell of your turtle. You have made those different shapes, different colors. I want you to also think about coming in and maybe adding some other kinds of shapes, maybe spirals or kind of copying the shape, but maybe doing it with a different kind of color. So for example, you know, maybe with, I did, I did this light colored purple here. I might want to even come in here maybe with the light kind of pink and maybe add some little spiral shapes. And you want to do that, kind of make it consistent so that you've got kind of a nice pattern going and just come in and think about adding some of those different colors in there. You could think about maybe using the colors complement. That might be a possibility as well. Now as soon as you have done that, the last thing that I want you to do is get your black oil pastel and I want you to very, very carefully outline around your turtle. We want it to stand out. We want it to get people's attention because it's the main focus of your, your art. Okay, so we are ready to move on to our next step. Something that I want you to think about adding, and mine are not dry yet because they're not working very well, but you might want to think about something really cool to add to your work would be to add some coral, and you can do this, but you have to really think ahead to do it. You'll need some wax paper, 
and you'll need some Elmer's glue and you'll need some glitter. And you'll have to do this like several days ahead of time for your project. Or you might get your project all done, do this, let it dry for several days, and then you can come back and add it later. But you basically, on your wax paper, if you will just use your glue and you want to really, if you are a glue globber, you're going to love this because you can really just glob that glue down on there and you want it to look like that crazy looking coral that just shoots off in all kinds of different directions but you want to make sure that you keep all the glue kind of together if that makes sense you don't want to spread it out too thin you want it all kind of glob together but you want it to have some type of shape so if you can just kind of work with the glue and then get it into the shape that you want. And then if you wanted to come back in, you could sprinkle glitter on it. You might even take, um, today I've got some little paint pens like this. These are actually a glue, but it's also got color in it. And you might wanna try swirling some of this down inside here, which looks super, super cool. And let that dry. I mean, it's gonna take a few days because this is super wet and you've globbed all that glue on there. Um, and then once it's all dry, and then you can actually come in and put this down into your work, and it'll look like a really sparkly piece of coral. So that is a really neat idea that you can do. But like I said, it takes a little bit of preparation because you have to let it dry for a couple days and let it get really, really good and dry so that it will peel off much better than mine did. So that is one thing that you can do for your coral. But while you're waiting on all that, you can also do your coral with paper. And something else, I told you that we would need um, pieces of cardboard. And something else that you might like to do is with your pieces of cardboard, you can get little pieces, add them on, cover them with paper, and you can add some different kind of definition and dimension to your work with having those different layers in there. So if I wanted to, I could maybe come in here, I could add one in here. That I'm going to kind of leave that up to you to come in and do those things. The other thing that you can do is with pieces of cardboard that you find, you can cut out little shapes like rocks and stones and shells and things, and you can <coughs> cover those with paper, add those onto your work. Also gives it a nice definition and some interest down there at the bottom. With your paper, though, I want you to think about coming up with some different types of coral and seagrass and things of that nature. And I usually just use my scraps, just tear off a little piece, and then go ahead and cut those shapes. And we want those to be very fluid looking type shapes. Something that you can do that's kind of a little way to cheat a little bit, make it a little bit faster, is if you fold your, fold your piece of paper in half, and this is gonna make it a little more difficult because the paper will be kind of thick. But you can start to cut out those shapes once again, if you've gotten a book that you're looking at, you can also look at, usually, especially if it's a book about sea turtles, I'm sure that it will have some examples of seaweed and different types of things like that in there. Now, if I put all of this down exactly the same, it's gonna look like I cut it all out at the same time. But if when I start to glue this down onto my paper, if I will take this one and then maybe flip this one into a different direction, and if I layer them on top of each other, it'll look like they're all separate, they're different, because we don't want them to all be the same, because down in the ocean, coral is not the same. No two pieces are the same. So you really want to try to make that look different. It's gonna add a lot of interest to your work. And layer, lots and lots of layering for this project. And don't forget that just because you cut this off and it looks exactly like this one doesn't mean that you can't, you know, maybe come back in here and trim this one down a little bit, making it a little bit different, but it was a lot faster than just cutting it off all by itself. So I'm going to add this in here. Um, the other thing that I can add to my picture is maybe some other different colors in there. If I've covered some rocks, I can add those different types of rocks in here. I can also come in um, and I've got netting. You could add netting in here. You could also add these long skinny beads. You can do this to look like kind of jig jagged kind of coral. You'll kind of piece them all together. That's a really interesting look as well. The other thing that I want us to talk about, and I want to leave plenty of time so that we can do it, is once you have gotten all this done, 
The last thing that I want you to come back and do, and this is the best part, is they have got at the stores, it's called Glitter Glue, and it's in these little squeezy tubes. And they've also got that other one that I had used to do our coral earlier. And these are super fun to come back and add some details into your picture. You want to also think about, you know, do you want to make some waves that come across your picture? And you might want to cut some of those out and add those to your artwork as well. I know in the example that I showed you earlier today, there are kind of wavy cut pieces of paper that are added into your picture. So you can add those with paper, which I think would be a great idea, or you could also come in and use your glitter glue. So when you're using your glitter glue, you can use it you know, around on the shells and on the shapes that you see, and it really helps it to pop, and it really adds a lot of interest to your artwork. You might want to come in and maybe add some shapes on there. You might want to come in and you could just kind of make it look Vincent Van Gogh, like swirling, swirling waves coming through there. So that's also something that you could come back and add. Don't forget your coral. And once you've tried the glitter, don't forget, you can also try, this is a metallic, I think. And I ended up using that on mine as well to just add some interest. Don't forget about starfish. You could add crabs, lobsters, those different kinds of seashells and things that we talked about into your picture. See, this is one of those projects, the more the better. So the more things that you come in there and add down onto the bottom of your work, the better it's gonna look, all right? Last thing that I wanna talk to you guys about, I know that I've left a lot of this up to you. A lot of this is up to you to decide how you wanna do it. There's no certain way that you have to do this project. You may wanna cut out waves, you may wanna add waves with your oil pastels, it's completely up to you. But the last thing that I kind of wanted to go over, the last little detail that really makes your artwork look interesting, it's kind of fun, I think, is some sequins. Because you know when that turtle's down there, he's got a, there's little bubbles coming up from the water. And so we want to add some of those little bubbles. And so you can get sequins, you can do colored sequins or the more kind of clear iridescent sequins, or you can just do more of a white sequin. And when you're doing your sequins, I usually did just a few by the mouth, but the more, I really did more of them kind of coming up towards the top of the water. Because if you've ever been down in the ocean, maybe scuba diving, you can see that the closer those bubbles get to the water, they're just the more there are. So I kind of tried to think about it like that. And so I did more and more bubbles as it got to the top. And something else to kind of think about is you know, remember when we've talked about before in different lessons, we've talked about your grouping and numbering of things, and don't do an even number. You wanna pick like an odd number. So I've kinda done one and then a group of three, one and a group of three, and then a three and a one. So kinda keep it in those odd numbers. And then you'll just come in and you'll just add those little sequins on there, and it will really give your artwork a little interesting little pop and everybody will, you know, oh, those are the little air bubbles of the turtle. So um, just a little something fun to add to your, your artwork today. And today's art quote is, behold the turtle, he makes progress only when he sticks his neck out. That quote is by James Bryant Canant. James Bryant Canant was a chemist, educational administrator, and public servant. All right, boys and girls, so we are just about done for today. I've got my, my finished product here, and I want to show you, remember when we were talking about letting that glitter dry, and then you can peel it off and use it, and I've got a little bit of it down here that I could barely peel off. We've got it down there. I've also added on some little marble stones. I've added on some netting. I've got finished with all my glitter and my slick paint and all this. I've added some starfish and things like that. And we are all done for today. I hope that your picture turns out as well as mine did and you had as much fun as I did. Thank you so much for joining us today for another edition of The Amazing Art Show. Now go out and make some amazing art.